Moin und hallo zum Filmfest Bremen. Mein Name ist Susanne. Und ich bin Eugene. Wir sind vom Indie Film Talk Podcast und begrüßen euch heute ähm, zu unserem neuen und aktuellen Gespräch mit ähm, Ian Scott Clement, dem Regisseur von Basenji und zusätzlich dem, dem Writer und Associate Director ähm, Gurav Basnet. Deswegen viel Spaß. Hi. Can you hello? Yeah. Hey. Can you How are you? Good. Uh, we're very excited to be here. I mean, in this virtual way, but mm. to, you know, be speaking to you guys is great. I I, I heard um, before some sounds from outside. I think it's very interesting to see where are you, where you are really. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a yeah. It's a pretty, actually, historic street in Kathmandu with cultural value. There's a temple there. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> of what streets? It's very Quite oh, you see a rickshaw over there. That's the common sight. Nice. So means nice view. Yeah, just go up the laptop. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. So That's very interesting. It's actually pretty busy. Pretty busy road. Yeah. yeah. No, it's very I, interesting. I, I forget also. about it because I've lived here so long. But mm. Once in a while, I'll be walking around and be like. Oh my God, this is my street. That's <laughs> this is your city. Strange. Kathmandu, wow. Kathmandu. Have, have you ever been to Kathmandu? Haven't. No, haven't. me too. No. So if we are allowed to go out, then we You've should go to Kathmandu. Yeah, I think so. It's very interesting because now we are seeing different kind of countries and um, we are in the rooms of the people and talking with them directly. This is very interesting. Thank you very much that you are here and that we can talk about your movie. And so I would directly start yeah, because... Please. Um, it was a very uh, horrifying and uh, crazy trip through the city. That's, that is the best review <laughs> we've had, yes. But I loved it too, so on the other side. But, so I think a question would everyone would ask who maybe don't know the word of the, 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 the title, what means Bazenji? Yeah. Hey, you want to? Yeah, you go, you go. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, literally, literally, it means uh, a barkless dog, but but there's a deeper meaning to that. For that, I guess uh, the yeah. audience should figure out themselves. We don't want to like reveal that. But basically, it, it means a barkless dog, an oh. African breed of dog. That's Basanji. Yeah. yeah. So it, it works as the, 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 the metaphor is part of the meaning there. Our main mm -hmm. character, he's extremely quiet um, and reserved. Um, also, the Basenji dog, when it does bark, it sounds kind of like a person screaming, yeah. people yeah. say. Like um, crying. So mm. if you've seen the film, I mean, I, is this going to be shown to people that haven't seen the Both. film? Or Both. 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 So or? If, if people are, haven't seen the film, maybe they should just swip over to you the have film. To, you have to see the, the <laughs> film. Yes. You have yeah. to see Definitely. it. Definitely. Definitely. Shame on you. Don't no, no. Let's movie. let's take care a little bit about spoilers, but um, <laughs> let's just talk. If it, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Okay. Okay. Um, so th yeah, th there is there are certain things we've built into the film. Like, I mean, our, our our hope would be that people would be interested enough to watch it multiple times, um, and then there are certain things we wanted to build into the film that would be so difficult to get that you'd have to watch it many, many times and maybe work together with other people. So the title of the movie and also the logo of the movie has deeper meaning that would just take a, a quite a bit to dig. Um, we're hoping someone on Reddit ends up opening up a subreddit for this, uh, <laughs> trying to decode the movie. And, <laughs> and I'll, I'll do that, I If think one so. person <laughs> finds it out, then everyone gets it. <laughs> Uh, we should give them a prize or something if they figure out. Before I ask my next question, yeah, yeah. next question, I would like to know, but how did you get the idea to, to uh, call it Basenji? Where, where this, this impulse come, came to you that you said, this is the idea, or was it at the beginning yeah. already? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, again, if we kind of a spoiler. This is so frustrating that <laughs> yeah. people get actually pretty annoyed with us. That we put something as cryptic as the title, but, you know. Um, mm, okay. <laughs> maybe yeah, we, maybe we can maybe we can ask you that uh, question just before we are finishing. This is an idea. The interview. So who don't want to get spoiled, they can we'll jump put it in and the end. This is a very good idea. No, I mean this is not something we're going to ever give up. Uh, someone's gonna have to figure this out. Okay. Um, okay. So I know okay. that must be, it's probably frustrating, but 
yeah, don't worry about it too much. I mean, if you don't know the full meaning, it's totally fine. It's not going to change your enjoyment of the film. That's right. He's just making um, it more like interesting for people that are watching. <laughs> She, she said that you are making it much more interesting for the people <laughs> that they have to find the clues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> I would like yeah. to pick up the um, point, or there's a style of the movie. Um, it is a very special one because it's a movie which is told from the POV mostly, um, or maximum is like a third person view. Why? I would, uh, let's do it very easy and ask why. How did you? How does this idea came to you? Yeah, um, well, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, first, uh, for the love of all the video games that we have played. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, the virtual reality thing, it's popping right now. Everyone's, like, into it, the new technology stuff. That's one reason. And others uh, have watched. Like, uh, oh, yeah, Enter the Void, Enter obviously. Enter the Void mm -hmm. and all this uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, I, I, I so. like, I, I remember... What, what, what first um, got me interested in just doing this kind of style at all was this game Halo, which mm. was like yeah. way back. I'm not really, actually, neither of us are really yeah, gamers. We're not, like, we're not really gamers. gamers. We're, um, but there was this mode where, you know, cause I would play with my friends and stuff, but they had this mode was like spectator mode where you would latch onto a character and you could choose uh, between third and first person. Mm -hmm. And I just got really... I started really enjoying just watching people play just from that and having control over the, you could also be tethered and there'd be an orbit, you know? Um, and I'd already liked like orbiting cameras to begin with. And I always thought, oh, this would be a really kind of cool way um, if to keep, I, I, all of my films so far have had a singular um, protagonist that you follow for yeah. the entire film. I'm never cutting away from them. And I was kind of going further and further there. And I thought, well, what better way to like, feel completely immersed in his anxiety than to like have this kind of claustrophobic mm. relationship to him where we like basically his character is almost like you think of it as a ride you know uh we're like he's his character is basically the car that you're sitting in mm -hmm. for the ride the story's happening to him he's just reacting to what's happening so for the audience to just be 100 in that ride and feel like okay we are Pravesh um And to keep the style as consistent as possible, with as little, you know, I wanted to keep it 100% kind of consistent so that by, by, you know, maybe five minutes in, people will get used to the style of it and are not thinking about the edits and the perspective and just are like, okay, this is how we see this world, let's go. Um, yeah. So the, those are all things. And just, just the whole idea of uh, the traditional style of filmmaking, I find that... Um, Unless you're watching avant-garde stuff, as far as the narrative realm, people are more, seems to be more experimenting with the subject matter and not the form itself. Mm -hmm. And I find that a bit um, like, you know, the, the directors that we look up to are people that push the, the form itself forward. Um, so I'm very, I'm always very interested in not taking anything for granted. Like, okay, we're doing a story, so they, they walk in, we should have an establishing shot, and then we should cut the close-up here, whatever. Mm. I try to, like, wipe the slate clean with all mm. those assumptions and really try to figure out, okay, here are the tools we have, right? We have gimbal, we can do this POV thing. Like, why do we need a... Con exactly why do we need an um, establishing shot, let's yeah. say? What yeah. does that actually do? And Right, so just trying to come up with something that's, this, you know... This um, is really... In uh, interesting because um, I thought about the writing process. I mean, do you have to um, do you have something in mind when you have to write down a POV story? Like, do you from the production side maybe is there something in the writing process where you have to think about? Uh, y y I mean, well, we started to right. Yeah, um, it, it, it's not that of a. There's not that much of a difference like other writing when the. We're, we're more like, we're, we're, we wrote it from a, a one character point of view. So we, we're always with him yeah. when we're writing it. That's how, like, it's carried along to, like, our... But I think the, the, PO, but the POV thing started with the dream stuff, right? Yeah. So um, I remember we were, we were writing some uh, well, flashbacks and or dreams. There, there's both of those in the film. <laughs> and I remember thinking, like, you know, I generally don't, like seeing dream sequences in movies where you see the character because i I've, i know some people dream like that but i don't think it's very common mm -hmm. i 
my dreams are always from first first person from POV right. and I, I, so I was pushing that to the team why don't we do the dreams in first person and then let's do the flashbacks as well in first person and then when it started to go and with the the uh, the mental state of that main character he doesn't speak very much and when you have a character that's like the story's happening to them they're, they're not so actively talking all the time uh, if if you have a character like that, it would be very hard to tell a POV story because you'd just be hearing this voice emanating all the time mm. and be very kind of alienating, right? But it's like we already have this really quiet character that's kind of just, he's kind of a fly in the wall in every situation. Like, it's actually uh, a good opportunity. Why don't we just push this all the way through? Yeah, that, that's, it, it came to us naturally because we we're writing uh, the character. And we're not breaking anything. We're all always with him. Even in our writing process, and then, like Ian said, like it started writing dreams and stuff like that, and it, it yeah. came to us you, you, uh, naturally. It's interesting because, I mean, even you had so many, I'm jumping a little bit, you had so many interesting characters mm -hmm. in the movie and really good actors who were playing them too. I would like to know how did you find them? Did you have a big uh, um, yeah, casting process, or how did you find the people? We, we did all our casting ourselves, but we had like extensive uh, auditions happening. Mm. Or like we did like two full-fledged auditions. We auditioned like numerous people. I'd say two, at least yeah, I mean, two hundred people yeah. each. Oh, wow. so we have yeah, some like, 300, 400 something people. Yeah. Um, we had a team to do that, so we we're, we're very patient. Oh, we, and then everyone that we chose, even the extras who have very small roles, um, we screen tested all of them as well. Mm. So like everyone that's in the film was, even if they had one line, you know, they were I had picked from the audition, then screen tested. And especially actors that had like, let's say the uncle and uh, Prabesh or Prabesh and Akash. Mm. We, the our finalists, if you want to call it, we screen tested all of them to get like, we split them up into pairs, and, and each would audition with each other. We do a screen oh, yeah. test with each. Mm -hmm. So we got down to maybe four Prabeshes, four Akashes. So we had them all screen test with each other, mm. and you know, narrowed it down. This is actually really extensive. Um, yeah. Such a lot of work. It's crazy. Actually. Mm. Talking, yeah, it was talking, talking about the cast. Beside the cast, how how big was your crew? With how many people did you work on set? Forty people. Yeah, in Nepal, like we, we don't, we, we have a very, even feature film, other commercial budget movies, they're like 50, 60 people. So we are around wow. about like 40, 50 people. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So many people. Yes. How did, That's the, quite big. Yeah. yeah. And then how you did like this, yeah, the, the beginning? It, how it did, might not be uh, ev evident in the, it doesn't, you know, yeah. it doesn't appear to be this huge budget thing, but really, yeah, to get all the lighting to look as natural as it does mm. and uh, you know, to plan out these very long takes. You have to shut down streets sometimes or, you know, there, there's just oh, yeah. a lot. That, and also there's a lot that was on the cutting room floor that you didn't see. Um, and then we, we did reshoots over the yeah. course of two years. So, so, so how long was the yeah, process it, from, from writing the script and then the shooting time? 2016 we started the script, yeah. is that right? 2016, 16. 2017 we did the 30 days of shoot. Yeah. Then we... And we did some more reshoots. Over the, over the course of 2018, we had about six separate shoots. None of them were reshoots. They were all new scenes that were mm. written. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm also the editor on the film. Mm -hmm. So as we were shooting uh, and editing, then I'd be like, I'd remove, remove a scene that was just not working. But then based on what was working, we went right back to the drawing board and wrote new material and actually a lot of the scenes like everyone's favorite scenes those are all scenes that were added in the 2018 cut mm. um so we, we just kind of kept allowing it to yeah going uh, back and growth. morph mm. and yeah. okay this is what's working oh we need more of this and if we put something like this in here then that connects to that and whatever you know and you know we, it was a very nice really and our, our producer was really cool with like letting us just keep shooting mm. and just being like i'll find the investors just go like do it you know <laughs> that sounds like a really yeah. good so producer. We were very it sounds like a really good producer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um producer, yeah. you, you, you said you had 40 people around me uh, around um how because it sounds for me like you need to rehearsal your rehearsals have to be very good for to get this this um, 40 people work together mm. 
and um, even this long takes which you had, that is everything working. Did you do it on set or did you prepare it before before you reached there? We did. We did preparations as well. We did shot the movie before with small cameras, and mm -hmm. we. The yeah. like where we're cutting it, where we editing did like a pre-edit, yeah. like a rough version of the yeah. movie, just with a handy cam, with just yeah. like whoever was at the studio. As far as the actors go, uh, we did rehearse like most the more difficult scenes um, extensively before the shoot. Uh, but as far as yeah, on set goes, we basically we went to every location beforehand and planned out the shots. And so by the time we're getting out to the, getting on set, we everyone knew what what needed to be done. We had an amazing production manager uh, yeah. who actually passed away um, oh. a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Chris Nalama, the, he's, uh, the, the edit you guys have might still not have the dedication to him at the end, but we need yeah. to add that. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he was an incredible production manager. He had done hundreds of films. And so, you know, we, in the pre-production, he was there the whole time. And we really, you know, meticulously planned this thing out. So... He, he was like kind of the general of that whole team. You know, we got 40 people there, but like he made sure everything was getting done on time. And then we had, you know, four ADs who were all great. Um, so everything. And then so and then I'm directing and then Gaurav was always there also helping. Like we were always like kind of going back and forth. Oh, we need that on set and whatever. And everyone's mm. just kind of you know, uh, so we had like a kind of like uh, we were like the creative team. And then we also had the like a very good team for all the technical stuff as well. Uh, DP was incredible. So we just had a great team. That's yeah. See, that, I can see it in your eyes. Like yeah. you, you, you look like you're really touched by when you're remembering how the work was and everything. Oh my yeah. God, I so. miss it so much. Yeah. This, this day, like. But you're working now, I heard, on a, on a new project. So um, before we yeah, end yeah. our talk, well, I think... I have to ask I know, a question about the scene. I, I haven't forgotten it. I haven't forgotten it. I would like to know what is uh, your, your uh, next project about. And then... It's... It's called uh, I Wish I Didn't Have to Do This. It's a 15-minute <laughs> short that's kind of a uh, thriller, um, satire of social media, and it's, you know, uh, based in kind of a, based around a hack um, and a kind of a blackmail situation. I, I don't want to actually give too no, much away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, it's, uh, well, you know, we, we should talk about Basanji, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least for, for the people to have something which they can be happy or, or to wait for, for the next one. Yeah. But I think you, you said yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that'll, it's that'll great. Coming, it's great. So Susan had to soon. ask her question because from the I beginning. Really, I ha yeah. No, no. no the, uh, not the beginning one. one. No, yeah. no, no. Okay. I have the one because I'm really interested how you did the scene with the baby. I mean, it's really terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And it's... I, Was it a real side. baby? No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a yeah. way. <laughs> what? Um, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'm it was. Not, yeah. Um, it's a very. Ex you need to explain, it's, guys. You need uh, to explain. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> that's that's secret. Story. If you're watching this, stop the interview and go watch the movie. But I'll, I'm about to spoil something. Yeah. So, if you're watching this now. You're watch the movie. Go watch it. And yeah. Definitely. Fast forward back to here. Spoilers starting in three, two, one. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so <laughs> the baby is real. Um, we, uh, we desaturated the skin uh, like through rotoscoping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a different color grade on the skin. And then the, the, the syringe is real, but the needle on the syringe is CGI. Uh, uh, and yeah. the blood is I'm also about... CGI. Okay. We have an amazing VFX team, actually. They've, they've done Hollywood movies. Um, they, uh, they, they, they did work. They recently did that Bobbleheads movie. I mean... I don't really know anything about that, but they're actually a really, it's this company's called Incessant Rain. It's a really high end VFX company. So they did a lot of work on this film, which you wouldn't notice, but mm. mostly it would be like removal of uh, shadows, um, mm. you know, uh, stitching together shots. There's certain shots that appear to be one shot, but that's mm. actually, you know, multiple shots. You try to figure out where that's happening. Um, <laughs> now we know. Yeah, we know mm. that, that's how that was. Created. Yeah. Very nice. Thank Very you. Nice. Because we talked about it yeah, and yeah. we talked oh. about how did they done this, and I think we were pretty close. It was really close, I think. But, so. but it's great. Not all of it. It's a, it's a really you. crazy scene too. And oh, yeah, but the uh, baby's real. Yeah, yeah, baby's a very good yeah. actor. <laughs> so, baby, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you had. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. 
Oh, nice. that, was, that was difficult to do, though. Mm. We had to do a lot of I takes. And mm. yeah, um, it's difficult to shoot with a baby. Also, the dog, um, the, the dog that barks, mm -hmm. that was also a very difficult scene. Mm. That was actually a police dog that trained to bark, but then, and it was the most, ex basically, most expensive actor per hour <laughs> on set. You had to. It's a police dog. So first the police have to give you permission by reading your script and they'll give you notes of what, what you can and cannot have in the film and whatever. And we had to do some adjustments. stuff there, adjustments. Mm. And then the, the, the dog gets paid uh, $80 an hour from the moment Ooh. it's leaving the station. And you also have to pay for a vehicle for it to be transported oh. wherever uh, Not bad. it needs to go. Mm. Plus a Maybe handler. next slide. By the time the dog got there, we were... Next life, I think it would be a good idea to be a, a film dog. film dog film in dog. Nepal. I think yeah. so. Um, yeah, yeah, they've got it great. They've got it great. No, thank you He's very. He's basically sitting in the chair, you know, with his little name on it, getting his makeup done, <laughs> being like, "Where's where's pretty the amazing?" Dog, you know? No, thank yeah. you very much, because I think we have much more questions. I think so, which we would like to ask you, and I think the um, our audience yeah, yeah, yeah. can Talk get a feeling of how us. how we we like your your movie and how we would like to appreciate every uh, appreciate you for you for being here too and i hope that everyone yeah would see it see it right yeah. and yeah have and a look at it and hopefully we will see us yeah. some someday yeah, i hope so too so if you are if you are in germany yeah let us know we're, we're do a physical <laughs> festival soon yeah. that would be so nice yeah so thank you very yeah. much for but being I'm here glad you guys are making ah. work. sorry yeah yeah thank you very much for being here thank you very much for everyone who's watching us and um yeah see you soon i think so have a good Thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye.